Sunday Swap's reverse ISO snapshot has come and gone, so what happens now? Cardano 360 came out, and we've gotten updates on what's already happened and what's coming up next for Layer 1 improvements. And let's take a look at Jed, Cody's algorithmic stablecoin. When is it coming out, and how's it going to work? Let's take a look in the weekly report. Welcome back to Woodland Pools. Today it's time for the weekly report. Let's jump in. The first thing on everybody's mind is now that the reverse ISO from Sunday Swap has come and gone. Let's take a look at the details of what happens next. So, the reverse ISO began on February 19th. The snapshot to be counted as part of the reverse ISO took place on February 24th. So the snapshot now came and went. So as long as you were delegated to an approved reverse ISO pool before the snapshot on the 24th, you're good to go to receive your free Sunday tokens. The reverse ISO rewards will be distributed sometime in Q2 through a special Sunday swap faucet that they have yet to release. This will not be through drip drops and we'll let you all know when it's time and how you can redeem those rewards. Additionally, we spoke about how the whole intention of the reverse ISO was to take some of the centralization that unintentionally happened during the initial ISO and spread it back out to the community. And it was really cool to see some stats on this so they swap put out that the MAV, the minimum attack vector, a metric that's used to track decentralization on the network, went up from 22 to 29 with almost 2 billion ADA moved to delegate to small single pool operators. And the Sunday Swap team said they hope that the reverse ISO delegators enjoy their new homes. And with that, it's probably a great time to say a huge heartfelt thank you and welcome to all of our new delegators that have joined us as part of the reverse ISO. We really, truly appreciate your support. I mean, look at how many of you there are, and we're so excited to have you on this journey with us. With all of you joining us, it took Aspen over a new milestone now to the first time over 4 million ADA staked and over 700 delegators. We really, really appreciate you coming with us. Now the snapshot has happened. You could technically go anywhere else, but you hope you stick with us, support the channel, support Cardano decentralization. We love that you're here with us. Stick around, and let's keep growing together. So the last week of the month means Cardano 360. As always, we'll link below all the main chapters so you can jump into more detail of any of the things that we've covered here, but there was a few pieces we wanted to make sure that we highlighted explicitly. They went into a lot of detail this month in the developer update, and let's actually start there and take a look at some of the improvements that have already happened. A lot of people have noticed, hey, the network's starting to feel pretty fast again, and this is exactly why. Let's listen in. Since the start of this year, we've made blocks 25% bigger. We've allowed Plutoscripts to use 24 percent more resources on a pair block level and 40 percent more resources on a pair transaction level so these are real tangible changes these are big chunky changes we've made to layer one since the start of this year and for all the improvements that we've already seen on the network and how much faster everything already feels the things that he listed there are just some of the most straightforward ones that can be implemented just very very simple protocol and parameter changes. But one of the other big things that's coming out is pipelining, which we talked about a few weeks back in our list of all the different ways that Cardano is going to be scaling. Now, the way it was initially described, pipelining seemed kind of like a technical and hard to understand concept, but John Woods breaks it down really nicely here and puts it together in a simple to understand way. So let's see his description on pipelining and how that's gonna improve things even further. What is pipelining? Touched on it before. Uh, technically, it's the coalescing of verification uh, of blocks and propagation of blocks. But what does that mean? It simply means that nodes in the network no longer have to do a full verification of a block before they pass it to their neighbor. And instead, we have a, a mechanism where, where the nodes can safely transmit blocks to each other before full verification has taken place without jeopardizing the security of the network. All of this comes together to do one thing, give us more headroom to scale Cardano faster and better. So really exciting to get some more detail around pipelining and how that's going to work and how it's going to improve things even better. The graphic that we put on the screen there while he was talking, if you want some more detail, comes from this article that he wrote last month where John Woods introduces how pipelining is going to work. And you can read through this article if you'd like some more detail on how it's all going to come together from a technical standpoint. And now one of the other things that we had talked about that was going to be coming to the Cardano ecosystem to be able to improve performance and throughput was the compression of Plutus scripts, the actual scripts that are running on the network to enable all these dApps and DeFi. But Kevin Hammond had some great updates on some of the Cardano improvement proposals that are coming into the release in June and what to expect there and how it turns out that script compression won't even be necessary thanks to SIP33. Let's take a look at that. The first of these, and possibly the most significant for many people, is that uh, we will be making uh, Plutus transactions smaller and cheaper. And what we'll be doing uh, to enable that is the ultimate in compression, John. So we're not just reducing your scripts by 10%, 
we're not reducing them by 20%. No, 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 no. We're going to reduce them down to a fixed size. What we're going to do is to store the scripts on chain so they can be reused. So a script will be a few bytes uh, on chain. You'll be able to refer to it repeatedly. That means you won't have to pass that script in every transaction. That means the transaction sizes for Pluto scripts will go down from the current figure, which is about... Um, 16, 14, 16 kilobytes, they'll be dramatically reduced. I don't want to say exactly where they're going to go to, but expect a major change there. And because the cost of a transaction is based on the size, because the script sizes will have reduced, that means that um, DApp users will be paying much less ADA to run their scripts. That's going to be a win-win-win, all-round win there. This is um, CIP33. Uh, so that's absolutely huge for several reasons. And this is the kind of thing that seems obvious in hindsight, where it's like, well, of course, why would we be sharing a copy paste of the same script over and over and over again, anytime you're executing a swap on Sunday Swap, for example. But you know, as the ecosystem is evolving and we're just now getting these things rolled out, the nice thing is these things that seem obvious, this low hanging fruit are things we can immediately knock out and we enjoy the immediate benefits of these performance improvements without having to really go and try and think through and try and come up with some really hard or clever implementation. And these are the kind of things that no matter how the market is looking or whatever it's doing, these are the kind of things, at least for us, that gives us so much confidence in Cardano because now every step of the way, every time that a big release has been coming out, we've always hit it in stride and delivered what was supposed to happen. Shelly delivered proof of stake, Gogan delivered smart contracts, and now Basho is going full steam ahead. And we are now seeing almost on a weekly basis performance improvements continually coming to the network. And that's only one of three Cardano improvement proposals that's going to be merged in in the June release. If you want to take a look at that SIP or any others, we'll include a link below to all the different Cardano improvement proposals, including SIP 33 and the other ones that were discussed in this month's Cardano 360. So then from there, there was a Project Catalyst update. But today we wanted to take a look at updates from Cody Labs and their algorithmic stablecoin that they're planning on releasing later Later this year. And we wanted to start with the most contentious question that's been going back and forth for a while now. How the hell do you pronounce the damn thing? Uh, just in terms of terminology, Jed, and, and that is the proper way to pronounce the Jed. The DSM. Comes from uh, ancient Egyptian uh, as a sign of, of stability. And okay, great. First mystery solved. But with that, let's take a look at what Jed is. Jed, and Jed is a stable coin that is based on a very advanced algorithmic design. Uh, it uses smart contracts to ensure price stabilization. And the coin uh, will uh, hopefully be the biggest one in the Cardano ecosystem. So it will be very useful for decentralized finance operations and, and everything else that requires a stable coin. It's, it's, it's more than, than just that. Down the line, you know, the, there is a, a belief that, that fees uh, should be paid with a stable currency, obviously, to give uh, the users... Um, a way to predict what they'll pay and we believe that uh, down the line uh, all transactions fees should be paid with uh, with a stable coin and, and jet is a very good uh, use case for that and the fact that it's an algorithmic stable coin that uses a smart contract to automatically rebalance itself is one of the biggest and most important selling points of jet if you want some more information on how jet works in detail we covered it a while back so check that out but then from there, the question is, this all sounds really great. We know how to pronounce it. We know what it's going to do, but what does the timeline look like and what should we expect? So let's take a look at when Jed might be coming out and when we can actually start working with it on testnet and then on mainnet. What it means is that we'll be probably going to testnet uh, next month in, in March, uh, then do uh, a third party audit and then go mainnet in a matter of you know six to eight weeks past testnet, uh, just to make sure that uh, everything is working properly as it should be for what uh, will become one of the biggest stable coins out there. So really exciting stuff. Can't wait to finally have a strong stable coin on the Cardano network. We've been waiting for it for a while and it looks like it's right around the corner. From there, we've been hearing a lot of talk about the metaverse. They did a whole long section with a metaverse introduction and update. They also went into several different projects building on the Cardano ecosystem and finally finished up with a dive into the Cardano DeFi Alliance. We'll let you check those out on your own. We have direct links to the chapters down below. Let us know what you're most excited about. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.